Good evening, everybody. Professor Ayorinde welcoming you to another online review session in organic chemistry. In today's session, we are going to review for your exam number four for the spring 2015 semester. And since most of you are in Dr. Bakare's class, we are going to use uh, one of uh, Dr. Bakare's previous exam number four for today's review. I know some of you have joined us already, so I will recognize you as we go along during the course of this uh, session. Uh, at this point, what I want to do, I would like to start with uh, question number four. I hope uh, all of you have a copy of that uh, uh, previous exam. I'm sorry, I'll, go to, I'll start with question number two. Okay. Uh, okay, let us see here. Uh, Ayana, can you go ahead and read question number two for us? Give the major organic products of each of the following reactions or sequences of reactions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so what this question is asking here, to give the major organic products of each of the following reactions. So let us start with uh, reaction A, this right here. Now, if you take a look at this molecule here, uh, of course, this is an aromatic uh, ketone. And since most of what we are going to, uh, uh, to, uh, to do today has to, uh, is concerned with the chemistry of alpha carbon, that is those carbon that are attached to carbonyl groups, so we are going to be dealing with chemistry of alpha carbon to carbonyl. Okay, now, the hydrogen that are attached to the alpha carbon are also referred to as alpha hydrogen. So now let me ask you a question. Uh, you could send me the response to the chat window, or uh, if you want to pick up the mic, you could also send me the response to the mic. Taking a look at this molecule here, how many alpha carbon do you have in this molecule? How many alpha carbon do you have in this molecule? Okay. Try one more time. Two, exactly. You have two alpha carbons. This molecule contains two alpha carbons. Okay, let us take a look at them. I'm going to number them for your convenience. This is carbon number one right here. That's an alpha carbon, and this carbon here is also an alpha carbon. So you therefore have two alpha carbons in this molecule. Okay, I do have another question for you. Uh, between carb carbon one and carbon two, which are alpha carbons, because they are attached to carbo a carbonyl group, which one of them contain alpha hydrogen? Which one of them contain alpha hydrogen? Okay, two, exactly. Okay. Only this here contains the alpha hydrogen. Very good. Now, the reason I bring that up is because this reagent here, what this reagent does, which is chlorine in the presence of acetic acid, what it does is to replace an alpha hydrogen with a chlorine atom. In other words, since they are asking us to give the product of this reaction, this will be the product right here. So that will be the product. Okay, in other words, this reagent here 
what it does is to replace an alpha hydrogen with a chlorine atom. Okay. Also, uh, for example, this is a general reaction indeed. If you also have bromine in acetic acid, you get a similar reaction. For example, instead of chlorine, supposing we have the chlorine now, supposing we have bromine. In the presence of acetic acid, this reagent will do uh, the same thing as we did before, in which case we are going to replace the alpha hydrogen right here with a bromine atom. So this indeed is a general reaction that in which you can use a bromine, chlorine, or sometimes you may also use a iodine. Okay, also, also let me give you another example of this. Uh, let me take all of this out. Let's see, I'll come back to this. Another example, supposing I give you this. Okay, I, I could ask you what is the product of this reaction. Now this reaction is similar to this that we gave you here. It is similar to this reaction. Keep in mind what we did tell you before. Uh, this reagent here will replace an alpha hydrogen with a chlorine atom. So in this case, the product that we expect to get will be Okay, so this is this indeed is a uh, is a general reaction. Okay, so now if you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay, so in order not to confuse you, let me go ahead and write the product of this reaction since they ask us to give the product of each reaction. So for those of you who are just coming in. I see here, Faith, you are welcome. Uh, Ole, you are welcome. I uh, see student 15. I don't know who that student is. Uh, Tamara, you are also welcome. Okay, so here, let us go back to this. The product will be this here. So all we've done here is to replace the alpha hydrogen with a chlorine atom. Okay, now let us go to question number question B. This here. Okay, for question B, uh, what do we have here? We have a beta keto ester. Say beta. Keto ester. Okay. Uh, in particular, we call this uh, beta keto ester. We call this aceto acidic acid ester. Let's take this out. Now they want us to react this beta keto ester here with this reagent. This reagent we will refer to as a, an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Get this out of here. Okay, so this is the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. 
and they want us to react this with uh, the beta keto ester, which is this here. Now, let me tell you this. There is, you do have a lot of different types of reactions in this particular uh, problem. Okay. Take this out. Give us some room here. This problem has a lot of reactions. Let me go ahead and list these reactions for you. One, it has what we call acid-base reaction. Two, it has what we call the Michael reaction, Michael addition reaction. Three, it has what we call hydrolysis. And four, it has what we call decarboxylation. So there are a lot of reactions in this particular problem. And each one of these are going to be very useful uh, for, the, for this particular exam. Okay, so you have acid-base reaction, Michael reaction, hydrolysis, and decarboxylation. Okay, so now let us see what does all of this mean. Take this out. Now, when we when we say we have a Michael addition reaction, a Michael addition reaction, you need what we call a nucleophile. Let us represent this with this symbol here: a nucleophile, and then you need what we call an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, which is similar to this right here. Why do we say this is alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound? If you take a look at this. Folks, I am taking time on this problem because it's very important uh, for your understanding of the rest of the, uh, this, this exam that we are discussing today. Okay, so if you look at this, this here, this carbon here, of course, that is your alpha carbon. And this carbon here, that is your beta carbon relative to the carbonyl. Okay? So therefore, we say this is an alpha beta unsaturated uh, carbonyl. In this case, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Now, what happens? Whenever you have a nucleophile, and you have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde or an ester, the nucleophile will attack the beta carbon. The pi electron goes to the alpha carbon. And what do you get? You get this here. Okay, let me represent the uh, nucleophile with a green color. Let's say this is green, okay? Okay, so now you have your nucleophile attached to here. And now the pair of electron is here. Now you, get, you have what we now call an enolate ion. You have what we call an enolate ion. This enolate ion can do a variety of uh, other reactions. Okay, so what I'm giving you here, this is an example of what we call a Michael reaction. In other words, for the Michael reaction, you need a nucleophile to attack the beta carbon of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde or ester and then you get this addition product right here, okay? Okay, so giving you that uh, information as background information, let us take this out. And what do we have here? 
you want us to give the product of this reaction. Okay? Now let us take a look at this. Let me ask you this. I am going to number these carbons here. Let us number the carbon skeleton. This is carbon one, carbon two, three, uh, we call this four. Okay. How many alpha carbons do we have in this molecule? How many alpha carbons do we have in this molecule? How many alpha carbon do we have in this molecule? Okay, two, exactly. Very good. Okay, can you tell me uh, what are those, which ones are the alpha carbon? Just give me the number. Which ones are the alpha carbon? One and three. Excellent, excellent. One and three are the alpha carbon. Okay. We also notice here that one and three also have alpha hydrogen. Okay. Now, what you also notice here is that 3 is alpha to, 3 is alpha to this carbonyl. It is also alpha to this carbonyl. And because of that, the alpha hydrogen on 3 will be more acidic than the alpha hydrogen on 1. So, what does that mean? What does that mean? What that means is that this here, this reagent here, the ethoxide right here, will be acting as a base. And so therefore the ethoxide will react with the more acidic alpha hydrogen. So the first thing you are going to get, this ethoxide will pull off, let me write the product here, will pull off, One of the one of the alpha hydrogen, thereby you are going to get an enolate ion here. You get an enolate ion here. Okay? Now, guess what do you think is going to happen? This enolate ion now will now react as a nucleophile. The enolate ion now will now react as a nucleophile in a Michael addition reaction. Okay? Okay, so having given you that background information, let us now go back to the to what we need to do here. Take this out. Okay, so what will be the product? Okay, so we have and take this out also. So what are we going to get? We are going to get the enolate ion on this alpha carbon comes here, attaches itself to this beta carbon here in the Michael addition reaction. And of course, the pi electron goes here. Okay, so therefore, what will be the product? Let us write the product. So we have this here. This here, this here, and then we have the nucleophile comes in. Let me use a green pen to indicate the nucleophile here. So now we have that attached to. That, that to here, here, okay, let me go ahead and number this carbon for you so it is less confusing. Of course, when you do that, <coughs> uh, the inlet is here. What is going to happen here, let me number this. Okay, uh, this is your carbon one, carbon two, three, four. Let me go ahead and number the carbon in this molecule here.
let us just for the sake of this discussion, let us say this is carbon five, this is carbon six, carbon seven, and carbon eight. If we do that, let us okay now do the same thing here. So this is our carbon one, carbon two. Okay, that would be carbon three. And of course this is carbon four right here. Now we come to the the other uh, reagent. So now this is carbon five, this is carbon six, this is carbon seven, this is carbon eight. Now if you see that give me a happy face. If you see that, give me a happy face. Okay, very okay, good. Okay, so now that is our Michael addition reaction. You notice what they've done here. The first part of this is the acid base reaction in which the ethoxide in which the ethoxide remove one of the alpha hydrogen to form your enolate ion, which is uh, which is right here, and then and then the enolate ion uh, attaches itself to the beta carbon right here, and then you end up forming another enolate ion. Because this pi electron here goes to here, and so we therefore form another enolate ion. So let me go ahead and take all of these numbers out. It does not confuse everybody. Okay? Now, that is what this reagent will do at this point. That's a result of using this reagent right here. Now they also tell us you are adding acid. What do you think the acid will do? Does anybody know what the acid will do at this point? Right here we form the enolate ion. What does the acid do? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Don't forget we have the enolate ion here. So what does the I no, no okay the acid okay very good the acid will do the uh, hydrolysis that is after the protonation of the enolate ion okay so the acid will protonate this so take this enolate out so the acid will protonate that okay so we have our uh, hydrogen here okay now. It will also do the hydrolysis. Who said that? That was uh, uh, Tamara said that. Uh, okay, Anna, Ayana. Very good. We now also do hydrolysis. So now we do hydrolysis. Okay. Now, what does the hydrolysis do? Does anybody know what the hydrolysis will do? Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm missing something. No, no, I'm not. Uh, what does the hydrolysis do? Make carboxylic acid. Excellent. Make carboxylic acid out of the ester. Okay, good. Okay, so now we now make the carboxylic acid. That's good. So we make carboxylic acid. So this ester here, this ester here will now become carboxylic carboxylic group. Okay. So take our pen. No, not that. Okay, now we now have this here. This in a green pen. This here. Okay, so we now have the this here. And this here, okay. So now we form our carboxylic acid. This is the hydrolysis, and then what will be the last step that we are going to see here? We are now going to see, as a last step, we are going to see uh, decarboxylation. Uh, who said decarboxylation? Uh, that was uh, uh, Tamara. Yes. 
At this point, we are going to get the cap oscillation. In which case, what is going to happen here? We are going to lose this part of the molecule as carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen here will come attach itself to this carbon here. So, therefore, what will be the final product? Proceed. Plus carbon dioxide. Okay. Now, what I've done so far is try to give you almost like a mechanism for this reaction. But keep in mind, you are not being asked to give the mechanism. The reason I did that, it is important for you to understand the sequence of reaction with, relative to the reaction mechanism in order for you to know what the product of this reaction will be. So, therefore, let me simply just take this out. You don't really need this. So all they ask us to do is to give the product of this reaction. And the product is going to be a very simple molecule, which is this here, say diketone. Let me use a black pen to simply distinguish between the sources of the carbon. And that is the product that you are supposed to give. So you now see what happens here. This is a loaded question right here. This question involves acid-base reaction because you are going to form an uh, enolate ion uh, by reacting a base uh, with the uh, alpha hydrogen. And then once you form the enolate ion, the enolate ion will attack the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. In this case, this molecule here. in a Michael addition reaction, and then subsequently you are going to do the carboxylation. So this is the product of this particular reaction right here. Now, if you follow that, give me an apices. OK. OK, OK. OK, so OK, very good, very good. Now, let us go to, let's take all of this out. This out, take all of this out. Okay, keep in mind the product for this is this right here. Okay, now C, let us go to C. As if somebody else has joined us, okay. Oh, Chelsea, you are welcome. Okay, let us go to C. Uh, Taking a look at C. You have this ketone here, cyclohexanone, reacting with formaldehyde. Okay. Now this reaction, this here, is what we call an aldo condensation reaction. This is an aldo condensation. Okay, this is an aldo condensation. Now, what is an aldo condensation? In an aldo condensation, you have two molecules from either a ketone or aldehyde joining together, and then you end up forming an alpha beta unsaturated molecule. Okay, for example, if you take a look at this here, take all of this out. Okay, but before we do this, let us take a look at this. Take a look at this uh, cyclohexanon. How many alpha hydrogen do you have, or how many alpha carbon do you have in this molecule here, cyclohexanon? Two, very good. And each one of those alpha hydrogen are carbon as alpha hydrogen. So potentially, therefore, each one of these here, this carbon here, or this carbon here, uh, could be used to form an uh, enolate ion because we have here, we have a base that could remove any of the alpha hydrogen to form enolate ion. 
On the other hand, the formaldehyde does not have an alpha hydrogen. Okay? So this is a very classic case in which we are going to use the enolate ion from this molecule here to react with the carbonyl of this molecule. Okay, now what will be the product? Let's see. Take this out. What will be the product? We told you in a dose, in an aldo condensation you have Two carbonyl compounds that one of them at least one of them must contain an alpha hydrogen. Okay, reacting to form an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. In this case, you are going to form this mold, this here. If you look at this here, this is an alpha beta. This is an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay? Let us look at what we have here. This carbon here, that is that carbon. Right here. Okay? And this carbon here, this carbon here is this carbon. I know some of you will be asking me what is the mechanism of this reaction, we will get into uh, get to that later. But for now, suffice it to let you know that any time you have an aldo condensation, you have two carbonyl compounds, uh, two molecules. Each one of them contains a carbonyl of a ketone or a carbonyl of an aldehyde. That is important. It must either be a carbonyl of a ketone or a carbonyl of an aldehyde. And one of them must have an alpha hydrogen. And then the alpha, the alpha carbon of one will attack. What happens is the alpha carbon of one of those molecules will attack the carbonyl of another molecule. And in the process, Two alpha hydrogen will be lost. One oxygen from the other uh, carbonyl compound will be lost, and that will be replaced by a carbon-carbon double bond, and that is what we have here. Okay. Okay. So, and that is that is your classic aldo condensation reaction. Okay. Okay. Supposing I give you this. Take this out. Supposing I give you this. Oh, okay, as a matter of, let me, no, I don't need to do that. Let me use this here. Okay, supposing I give you this molecule here, right here. Supposing I give you that molecule, and I tell you to give me the starting material for this molecule here, using an aldo condensation reaction. Give me the starting material for this molecule here, using an aldo condensation reaction. Does any, can anybody uh, give me uh, some help with regard to that question? Let us see here. Let me see if I can help you out. Let me go ahead and number this. I will number this here. I say carb this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. Okay. Now, can you tell me which one of those carbon will be the the carbon supplying the enolate ion? Which one of those carbon will be the carbon sub? Okay. Excellent. Oh, okay. I see somebody gave me the answer already. He said we need to use uh, acetone and uh, what is that? He says okay. I didn't see that anyway. 
Okay, I think somebody is give, giving us the answer. Somebody said we need to use acetone and I believe it's say formaldehyde, which is correct. Now, if you take a look at this molecule here, the, that carbon number two will be the source of your inulate ion. So if you clip this right here, since that was where you have your original carbonyl of the other uh, carbonyl compound, so therefore we could say that this molecule here could come from acetone reacting with formaldehyde. Okay? You can see here, acetone reacting with formaldehyde will give us this right here. Okay? So you can see here the aldo condensation uh, is a, also is a very general reaction. And uh, the problem most students uh, have to deal with, we give you one example in class that we want you to uh, generalize to uh, with all other types of molecules. But the, what you need to to understand is understand the principle behind each one of these reactions rather than memorizing the reaction itself. In this case, you have an alpha hydrogen, you remove the alpha hydrogen from the inulate ion, and then that inulate ion reacts with another carbonyl, and eventually you are going to lose a molecule of water uh, because this one of the, uh, the oxygen here, in this particular instance here, The oxygen here will be gone. Two hydrogen here will be gone, and therefore that is how you form your your water. When we get to the mechanism for this reaction, uh, you will understand a little bit more of the uh, the sequence of reaction leading to the product. Okay, now let us go to D. Let us go to D. Okay, but before we do that, let me go ahead and erase all of this. Let me erase all of this here. Okay, keep in mind that the, this is the product right here. Let me take this out. For C, this is the product for C. Okay, for those of you who are writing this down. Okay, now let us go to D. Yeah, I'll move this up a little bit. Okay, problem D. Okay, now we have another molecule. Can anybody tell me how many alpha hydrogen do we have in this molecule? How many? <laughs> okay, okay, no, no. One, exactly, it's one, it's one. And this is the only alpha, keep in mind the the alpha hydrogen is that hydrogen that is attached to the alpha carbon, and the alpha carbon is the carbon that is attached directly to a carbonyl. Okay? So in this case, we only have this here as the alpha carbon. Okay? And we also have two alpha hydrogen attached to that carbon. Okay. So what are we going to get here? take this out. Okay. They want us to give the product. Okay, somebody has a question. Don't you mean one alpha hydrogen, one alpha carbon? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, yeah, I mean, to, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean one alpha carbon and two alpha hydrogen. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now, what do we have here? We have LDA. LDA is a base. Now, what do you think LDA is going to do? They want us to give the, the product. In this case, the THL is just a solvent. The THL is just a solvent. Okay, abstract a proton. Okay, what proton is it going to abstract? Which proton is it going to abstract? You've got to be very careful here. The alpha hydrogen. Excellent, excellent. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, now I think you guys are getting the idea now. So, what will be the product?
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, so now since this is the alpha hydrogen here, right here, so we are going to remove one of those hydrogen. Now we form the enolate right there. Now, once we form the enolate, this enolate now could act as a nucleophile in an SN2 reaction. Okay? The enolate ion now could react as a nucleophile in an SN2 reaction. So at this point, if you look at what we have here, we now have what we call an alkylating agent. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen now? What do you think is going to happen? We have an alkylating agent, we have a nucleophile, and this alkylating agent is a methyl bromide. I will tell you right now, this will be an SN2 reaction. SN2 reaction. Okay, the alkyl group will, it will act exactly. The enolate will attack the, the carbon of the methyl bromide, and then you are going to alkylate the alpha carbon. Okay, so therefore the product will be this. I mean, make that a little better than that. Okay? And that will be the product for that sequence of reactions. Now, if you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay? You notice so far we have been focusing on the reaction of the alpha carbon and what to do to make the alpha carbon reactive, you remove the alpha hydrogen using a base and once you remove the uh, alpha hydrogen you get the enolate ion and that enolate ion can be used to perform any other reaction. In this case, just alkylation. In the previous reaction we had, uh, we uh, it performed the reaction with uh, aldo condensation, aldo, I mean aldo condensation, and the one before that it performed the reaction that we call the Michael addition reaction. So the uh, enolate ion is a very powerful uh, uh, intermediate. Okay, now let us go to the next one. E. Let's take this out. Okay, I'm sure you guys are written this down, so let me simply take, well, let me leave it there for a while. Okay, so this will be, let's say this is here. Okay. Okay, now what do we have here? We have a diketo compound. Let me go ahead and, you know, this is, Question E that we want to do now. Let me go ahead and number this. So we say this could be uh, now. Let us call this our uh, one. Let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Seven carbon atom in the carbon uh, in the, in the skeleton for that molecule. <coughs> now, what is going to happen here? This is an example of an intramolecular aldo condensation. Because anytime you see this reagent here, anytime you see the hydroxide, this reagent right here, and then you have a ketone or an aldehyde. You need to be thinking of aldo condensation. So this would be an example of intra
molecular aldo. Okay? Now that was <coughs> you generate the inolate ion and the inolate ion will react with a carbonyl within the same molecule. That is why we say intramolecular and therefore. Okay, so where is that going to take us? And also uh, remember that the ADO condensation will give you an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Okay, so let us see here. Supposing we say that we are uh, we generate inolate ion on carbon let us say we generate inolate ion on carbon uh, one. Actually, let me let me number this differently so it will be easy for us to see. Let me number from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Let us say we generate the inolate ion on carbon one. And therefore, we attack carbon six. Okay. If we do that, what do we get? Get this. We get a six-member ring. If you count them, you see that we are going to get a six-member ring. Yes, yeah, six-member ring. Okay. In which we have carbon is here. Let me go ahead and number those carbons. Okay, we say this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, carbon six. On carbon six, we have a methyl group attached to it. Okay, very good. We have a methyl group attached to it, so that is here. Okay, now. Keep in mind, in the aldo condensation, you are going to lose two alpha hydrogen and then the oxygen from the other carbonyl to form water. Okay, so this, we are going to lose two alpha hydrogen on this carbon here, right? So therefore, we are going to form a carbon carbon double bond right here. Okay? okay keep in mind, the carbon carbon double bond replaces the carbonyl on carbon number six, which is this here. And of course, if you notice here, we have lost two hydrogen. We have lost two hydrogen on this alpha carbon. Yes, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so we don't uh, keep both oxygen on the final product. No, no. You don't keep the, yeah, that's a very good question. You do not keep the oxygen on the final product because what you, what you do, you are losing water, okay? One of the oxygen from the water comes from the, uh, the, the carbonyl oxygen uh, of the other car carbon. Uh, the, for what you have, you have the one carbon is acting as a nucleophile, which is the inolate, the inolate ion. Because it's your nucleophile, okay, let me see here, take that back. Take all of this out of here. The inolate ion is your nucleophile. In this particular instance, let us say we have this. And you form inolate here. That's your nucleophile. Okay, now. Say now, in the case of uh, the uh, formaldehyde that we use earlier, This carbon here, this carbon here from formaldehyde from the other carbonyl is what we call your electrophilic carbon.
So whenever you perform the uh, aldo condensation, the alpha carbon will react as your nucleophilic carbon, and the other carbonic carbon will react as the electrophilic carbon. Now what happens is the alpha carbon will lose two hydrogen, and the electrophilic carbon will lose its oxygen, and then you replace that carbonyl with a carbon-carbon double bond, okay? So that is what you have in the aldo condensation. Okay, so let me go back to... Somebody else also has another question. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay, so let me... Uh, okay, so now we have the... We've done that question number uh, E. Let me take all of this out. Yes, go ahead. Somebody has a question. Chelsea, go ahead. Oh, are you typing your question or you want to pick up the mic? Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the answer to question E right here. This is the answer to question E. Okay, now let us do G. Uh, I'm going to type the question. Okay, go ahead and type the question. Okay, while I'm waiting for your question, let us go to G. What about is F in here? I did not see F. Let me see. Okay, why do we have double bond in the product and not two uh, keto groups? Did a regular condensation occur, or did something else happen with uh, with water? Okay, well, okay, as, okay, there's somebody else reacting with the, okay, what is, okay, what you guys are asking is the reaction mechanism. We will get to the reaction mechanism uh, shortly, okay, before we leave today. Okay, so let us do G. Okay, G, what do we have in G, okay? Uh, for G, okay, let me also give you a little bit of background before we go to G. This molecule here, this is a nitrile. Anytime you have a nitrile, which is a carbon nitrogen triple bond, right? This carbon here, the carbon of the carbon nitrogen triple bond is an SP, is an SP carbon which means that it is electronegative. In other words, it will be pulling electron away if you form an enolate ion on this carbon right here. The point here is the carbon nitrogen triple bond behaves as though it is a carbonyl. So therefore, this carbon here, consider this carbon an alpha carbon, and also the hydrogen attached to that carbon will be alpha hydrogen, okay? So if you think that way, if you think that way, if I therefore ask you, what kind of reaction is taking place here on G in G? Can anybody tell, tell us what kind of reaction is taking place on G? What kind of reaction will it be? Will it be hydrolysis? Will it be aldo condensation? Okay, okay. What will be the ulti yes, that that will be the first reaction. You form enolate ion, okay, on the alpha carbon. Then what happens to the enolate ion? 
keep in mind you have two molecules here. You have an aldehyde here, and then you have this here. Then what happens eventually? What, would, what is the ultimate product? It bonds to the carbon on the OK, and eventually you are going to lose water, and therefore you, you are going to get an aldo condensation. So this is an, another example of an aldo condensation. Let me take this out. OK. OK. Therefore, if it is an example of an aldo condensation, let us see what are we going to get here. OK. Let us see. We have. We have that. OK. Now we want to. OK. Remember what I told you? The alpha hydrogen in this case, this is your alpha hydrogen here. We are going to lose those two alpha hydrogen. And we are going to lose this oxygen here. OK. What do you think is going to happen now? We are going to get this. Double bond is now here. OK. And that carbon is here. And hydrogen is here. And OK, now do you see this? Let us let me go ahead and erase some of this so that you can see this better. OK. So I don't know I want to do that. And of course, in the process, we are going to lose water. Lost water. Oh, no. OK, let us see. This carbon here, OK, that is that carbon. OK? This carbon here, which is your alpha carbon right here, we, we are losing those two hydrogens. And that is this right here. Okay. So once again, this is your classic aldo condensation reaction in which you have two molecules. In this case, you consider that the nitrile is acting as though it is a it is a ketone or aldehyde. So you have two molecules that one of them contain an alpha hydrogen. You remove the alpha hydrogen, you form the enolate. And then the enolate now attacks the electrophilic carbon, which is this here, thereby displacing the oxygen, replacing the carbonyl uh, with a carbon carbon double bond, and that is what you have right here. Okay? So this is your classic aldo condensation reaction. Okay, does somebody ask a question for me? Oh, okay, very good. Now if you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay. Okay. Now let us go to H. Let us go to H. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody. Yeah. I'm sorry. I jump F. I will come back to. Let Let's do F first. Okay. Thank you. Somebody reminded me about I about F. Yes. Okay. I'm hoping that you guys have written this down. So let me go ahead and erase this. Uh, then we do F. OK, let us do F. OK, now, in F, what do we have in F? What do we have in F? We have what we, call, what we call a beta keto ester, beta keto ester. Why do we say beta? In relation to this uh, ester group right here, the carbonyl of the ester, this 
this carbon here, let me number it. This carbon here, this carbon here, let's just say that is carbon one. Okay, that would be your alpha carbon. And therefore, the carbon that is the carbonyl here, we will call that the beta carbon. Okay? So that is the beta carbon, and this is the alpha carbon. And that is why we, ref since on the beta carbon, you have a carbonyl, so therefore, in this case, this is a uh, ketone, so we say this is a beta keto ester. Or you could say beta carbonyl ester, if you want to say that now. Why do I say that? Anytime you have a beta keto ester or beta carbonyl compound, or a, carb a beta carboxylic acid, a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid, now, what is going to happen is this. Let me take this out. Okay. The first thing you see an acid. What does this reagent do? Can anybody tell us what, what does the uh, adrenum ion, what will it do? Anybody has an idea? We have an ester in this molecule. What will it do? Okay. It will do hydrolysis, exactly. Turn the ester into carboxylic acid, okay, and cause the carboxylation. Exactly, very good. But let us take one step at a time. Okay, the first thing it does is to do hydrolysis. In other words, it could turn the ester functionality to a carboxyl group. Okay, let us see. Let us pretend that we do not see this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, heat being applied right here. Okay, so we are going to get this. So we get that. And then once we get that, once we apply, oh, by the way, this would be carbonyl here. Anytime you have a carboxylic acid, and you have a carbonyl of a ketone or a carbonyl of an aldehyde on the beta carbon, beta to that carboxyl group, which is in this case, you have this carboxyl group right here, this carboxyl group here, and then you have this beta carbonyl of a ketone. Anytime you have that and you apply heat, you apply heat, what happens, you are going to do decarboxylation. Okay, you will do decarboxylation in which you will be losing carbon dioxide right here. And then the hydrogen that was attached to the oxygen will now come to the alpha carbon. Okay? So if that is the case, what will be the product here? The product will be this. Okay? That is the product they want us to give. So therefore, let me simply just... The reason why I gave the, this here is just to explain to you how we got to the final product. But you don't need to give this. You don't need to give this. Okay? The product they want is just simply this right here. Okay. Okay, so what have we done here? Essentially, uh, two things are taking place here. Hydrolysis, you hydrolyze the ester to the carboxylic, uh, uh, carboxylic group, and then you do decarboxylation, and then you lose carbon dioxide. And that happens anytime you have what we call a beta. Carbonyl acid. Okay? In other words, you have a carboxylic acid and then you have a carbonyl beta to that carboxyl functionality. Okay? And you are going to get the carboxylation. And that is what we have in this case. Okay? 
Okay, let us do the last one. H. Okay, turn the S down. Okay. Take this out. Okay. Okay, we did our G already. Let us do H. Now H I would, okay, now H is also should be familiar to you guys, but this there's a slight difference here. We have not done this, we have done this today. Now, let me give you a little background here. Okay, of course you are starting with a a ketone and then you are also reacting that with a secondary amine. Anytime you have a secondary amine and you have a ketone, let me use as an example, this would be a fairly easy example to look at and take this out. Okay, I'm assuming that you guys already got this. If you have a ketone, say we have this ketone here. And we have, in this case, let us react this ketone with, uh, with this here, okay? Let's say we react the, the ketone with this, I mean, they, they have given us. What are you going to get? You get what we call an inamine. You get an inamine. And what does that mean? This here. Okay, that's the amine. And then you have a carbon carbon double bond, and we call this an in amine, and that happens any time you have a secondary amine reacting with a ketone. Now what have we done here? This in amine, you may want to look at it as nitrogen attached to a carbon-carbon double bond, which will be, you could think of it as a vinyl amine. Because this group right here, we sometimes we might refer to carbon-carbon double bond as a vinyl group. Okay, so you have an inamine is carbon-carbon double bond attached to nitrogen. And that happens any time you have a secondary amine reacting with a ketone. Okay, just keep that in mind. Okay, so let us keep that in mind for now. Now, let us now come back to the, pro the reaction they have given us. Let us come to the reaction they have given us. Okay, based on what I've just told you now, you are now going to react this ketone with this amine, okay? What do you think the product will be? Let me help you out here. Let me go ahead and number the carbon here. Just say one. Two, three. Okay. What do you think the product will be? Where would the double bond be? We know that we are going to form a double bond. Where are you going to form a double bond? Where? This secondary amine will react with this ketone. Okay. The double bond is going to be formed where? Between. Okay, between what? Between which carbons? Between carbonyl carbon and the alpha. Very good. Excellent. Not that what between carbon two and three or carbon two and one. Okay? Because this in this case this is a symmetrical molecule. So therefore, so the answer should be very simple. Okay, so the answer should be this here. Just ignore my telephone. That's my telephone ringing. Okay. Okay. And that is the product. Okay. That is any time you have a ketone or aldehyde reacting with a secondary amine, 
you are going to form an enamine in which the nitrogen will replace the oxygen atom and then the double bond will be formed between the carbon of the carbonyl and the carbon of the alpha carbon. Okay? Keep, it, keep that in mind. And in amine, you are going to form, replace the nitrogen with oxygen and the oxygen with nitrogen. And then the double bond will now be formed between the carbon of the carbonyl and the alpha carbon. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, once you do that, you form your enamine. Now, the enamine is very re reactive. I need to also give you a little bit of background here. That enamine, you could write the resonance structure or contribution for the enamine. Could write the re resonance contribution for it. Keep in mind you have a pair of electrons on this nitrogen. And if you write the resonance contribution, this non bonding pair of electrons on nitrogen will come to form a nitrogen carbon double bond. And the pi electron here will come to the alpha carbon. And so, therefore, what do we have? We have this. Okay? See what has happened here. See what has happened here. Now we have almost formed a de facto enolate ion. Okay? It's almost like okay. Because think of the carbon nitrogen uh, double bond as a carbonyl. So now this now looks like an enolate ion. Okay? So now what do you think we, we are going to do with this? They want us to react that with this compound here. Now what type of reaction are we going to get? That would be a Michael addition reaction. That would be a Michael addition reaction because what are you going to get? You have, take this out, you have this, what I call a pseudo, what I call a pseudo enolate ion. I will call that a pseudo enolate ion. We simply come here as, as a nucleophile, and the pi electron comes to this here. And so, what are we going to get? We get this. Let me use a green pen to show the carbon skeleton from the Michael addition uh, reagent. So we have this now. OK, now what is missing now, our nucleophile will now attach itself. So nitrogen, is, this is here. That is there, and of course this is uh, here. Okay, this is okay. Oh, sorry about that. Take this out. Okay. So now we have that there. Now this will be right here, right here. Okay. Oh, let me write this better. Uh, let me raise this. Give myself some space here. Okay. So we have. Okay, and then the 
CH2 is here, which is a, a pseudo enolate ion, and then we have this here. Take this out. Okay. Now, of course, uh, when we move this to, okay, now we are going to, since we are tagged this here, keep in mind that right here, right here, okay, we, that uh, enolate ion is going to be formed on that carbon. So now this is right here. Okay. Okay, so that is the product at this point that you are going to get right here. And then when you then add the dilute acid, what does the dilute acid do? The first thing is it will protonate the enolate ion. And then also now hydrolyze the nitrogen carbon uh, double bond. So to a, back to a carbonyl, so now we are going to end up getting this. Okay. Hmm. My pen is moving all over the place today. Let me move this back. Okay, so now we are going to get this. This is a very clever way of actually adding, if you look at this, let me uh, make all of this smaller so we can see. Okay. So this is actually a very clever way. If you look at this, this is actually a very clever way of adding this molecule here. And I take all of this here because they, they are not asking us for the reaction mechanism. I gave this so you understand what is happening. It's a very clever way of actually adding this acetone to this here to, to uh, perform a Michael addition reaction. So anyway, the final product is this. The final product is this. The intermediate product is this, okay? And if you look at this, the first thing that happens here, the first thing that happens, you form the uh, enamine, uh, the secondary amine reacting with a ketone to form the enamine. And then the enamine, the most important part of this is that the enamine is capable of acting as what I would call a pseudo enolate ion, and that pseudo enolate ion would then, could then react with, you could do alkylation with it, you, uh, you could uh, even, you could uh, actually do a uh, aldo condensation with it, but in this case we are doing a, a Michael addition reaction with this molecule right here, and then you get this here, and finally after the hydrolysis, you get the diketo product. I know this is a very complicated uh, reaction, but uh, if you understand the sequence of reactions here, it will not be that uh, difficult for you to, to actually see the final product. But anyway, we have finished our question number one. I know we've taken a long time. I, de I decided to take a long time with this problem because it is very important. There are so many fundamental uh, uh, parts to this that uh, we did not want to rush uh, through this particular uh, set of uh, uh, questions. Okay, now at this point, let us go to question number four. Okay, let us see. Uh, Chelsea, is your mic working? If your mic is working, can you read this question for us, question four? Oh, it's not working, okay. Uh, about faith, is your mic working?
Okay, well, let me go back to Ayana. Ayana, can you read question number four for us? Use the product of the following condensation. Write a stepwise mechanism to show how the product is formed from the starting material shown. Use curved arrows to show electron flow and show the structure of all intermediates. Okay, very good, and thank you. Okay, look at this here. I believe we've done this already in question number one. Okay, the first part of this is uh, write, uh, give the product of the following condensation reaction. Okay, so what kind of condensation reaction is this? Anybody knows? What kind of condensation reaction is this? Anybody has an idea? No, no. Keep in mind, uh, this, this, you have two ketones here. You have two ketones. You have two ketones. Uh, the digma, you need an ester for digma. Okay, you have two ketones. So what type of reaction will this be? We've done this already today. Intramolecular. Yeah, intramolecular what? Which type? Intram exactly, intramolecular aldo condensation. Intramolecular aldo condensation. Okay, if that is the case, keep in mind, in an intermolecular aldo condensation, of course, let us imagine here that you form enolate ion, right? If you form enolate ion, and then let us, let me go ahead and number this. Say one, two, three, four, Five, six, and seven. Okay. Okay. <coughs> now, if you look at this, let us imagine that we form enolate ion on carbon number one. Okay. If we form enolate ion on carbon number one, and then we use that enolate ion as a nucleophile to attack the electrophilic carbon of the other carbonyl, okay? How many carbons will be in this ring? How many carbons will be in the ring? Six. Okay, good, good, very, it's a six-member ring uh, system that we are going to form. Okay, follow what I, you know, if you remember what I told you before. So now we form a six-member ring. Six-member ring. Let us number the carbons. This is carbon one, carbon two, three, four, five, six. Okay. What else do you have on carbon number six? What else do you have on carbon number six? Double bond. Exactly. You also have a methyl group on carbon number six, okay? So the methyl is here, then the double bond must be on carbon number six because we are going to replace the carbon-oxygen double bond on carbon number six with a carbon-carbon double bond, which will be alpha-beta, okay? Keep in mind, this is the alpha carbon, and this is the beta carbon. Now. If you follow that, give me an happy face. If you follow that, give me an happy face. And this will be a classic example of an intramolecular aldo condensation. Intramolecular aldo condensation. Okay? Of plus, we are going to form water, of course. Okay, keep in mind that we lose the oxygen of the other carbonyl, and we lose two hydrogen from the alpha carbon, okay, that forms the enolate. Okay, somebody asked a question. Can you show the alpha beta on the original structure? Oh, okay. Can I show the alpha beta on the original structure? Okay, let me show this. Okay. The alpha is carbon number one, which is this here. Okay? OK, 
Okay, and the beta is carbon number six. Keep in mind, you form the enolate on carbon number one, and you attack carbon number six to uh, to form a carbon-carbon uh, double bond. Okay, so the carbon number one is your alpha in the original starting material, and carbon number six is your beta. Okay, okay, very good. And now they also want us to write the reaction mechanism. They want us to write the mechanism for this reaction. Do you want us to do the mechanism or do you already know the mechanism? Yes, for you. Let's do it and no for no. <laughs> you want us? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let us do the mechanism. Okay. Okay. Let me move this up a little bit. This up a little bit. What time do we have? Wow, it's almost uh, 8 30. Uh, okay, that was that is carbon number problem number four. Now, okay, so we want to do the mechanism. Let us see here. I did promise we will do the mechanism. Oh, 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 you guys do not want the mechanism. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. He said, no, we don't need to do the mechanism. Oh, okay. I meant for the, the somebody. Well, somebody said, let us do the mechanism. It's not that much. Let us go ahead and do it. Okay, so we start off. Let me. Uh, if you want to do the mechanism, let's put all of the hydrogen on carbon number one, okay? Because we want to show. Okay, so the first thing that happens, of course, for the mechanism you have, the hydroxide comes in as a base to grab the one of the alpha hydrogen, and in so doing, get this out of here. In, in so doing, of course, we are going to form your enolate ion on that carbon. Okay, so what do we have? We now have this here. So from the inlet ion here. Okay, and then what happens? That inulate ion simply comes here, attach this here, and then you get this. That is where you form your six-member ring. This is carbon number two right here. Okay, carbon number one has done that, so we now have this. Methyl is here. Okay, so you form your alkoxide. Of course, water is formed right here. Keep in mind when you, when this hydroxide pulls the uh, the hydrogen from the alpha. Uh, carbon, you form water right here. Okay. Now, this water now will protonate. This water will protonate uh, the alkoxide. The alkoxide comes in graph and hydrogen from water. And then what do you get? You get this. This is here, and of course you see have the hydroxide here. Okay, now at this point, the hydroxide. Will keep in mind that we have two hydrogen here. 
we have them here, we just did not show them. So now the hydroxide will simply come, come in, abstract one of this hydrogen, and then you form your carbon carbon double bond, and then you lose your water. Okay? And now that is how you form. That is how you form this here. Okay, so that is the reaction mechanism for the aldo condensation. That's simple. Okay, <coughs> the, the first product you form is what we call an aldo. Right here is what we call an aldo. We call this aldo because we form alcohol and uh, actually this is this is a ketone, but use, this reaction was first performed using an aldehyde, so we just use, now use the generic name of aldo for this. You have a carbonyl and an alcohol, so we call this an aldo, the aldo product, and then the aldo product is now. Are dehydrated by the hydroxide coming here, pulling this hydrogen here, and eventually you form water, and then you form your alpha beta unsaturated product right here. Okay? So that is the reaction mechanism for the aldo condensation. Okay, now let us go to question number five. Maybe we'll do uh, two more before we leave. Okay. Ah, okay, let us see here. Uh, all right, is your mic working? If your mic is working, can you read question uh, five for us? Oh, it's not? Okay, but uh, if you're anybody whose mic is working, just pick up the mic uh, if you are not uh, talk to us tonight. Okay. Okay, I guess I have to go back to... Uh, uh, Ayana, go ahead and read the, read the question for us again. Okay, student, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in this particular question five here, what they want us to do, give the product of the following condensation. This is another condensation. Now, in this case, this is not an aldo condensation because for aldo condensation you need either an aldehyde or a ketone. In this case, this is an ester. Okay. Therefore, this is what we call this is what we call intramolecular placing. Exactly. Very good. Intramolecular placing condensation, which is Dickman condensation. Some people refer to this as Dickman which is an intramolecular intramolecular placing condensation. Now for the for placing condensation you need a nucleophile coming from an alpha hydrogen. And that alpha hydrogen could be an alpha hydrogen of a ketone or an aldehyde. However, in order for you to call this a cleansing condensation, the electrophilic carbon that the alpha hydrogen will attack must be a carbonyl of an ester. Keep that in mind. In order for you to call a reaction a cleansing condensation, the electrophilic carbon that is attacked, attacked by the uh, enolate ion must be an ester. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so in this case, let us look at this. We also want us to write the mechanism for this. Let us look at this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, OK, 
Okay, number. Let me number the carbon skeletons here. Uh, let's call this carbon one. Carbon. Two. Okay, take my pen. Carbon two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Okay. So. <coughs> Okay, numbering the carbon skeleton. So we have seven carbon atoms. Now, one of these, uh, fortunately for us here, this is a symmetrical molecule. Okay, so where do we want to form the enolate ion? Anybody? Where do you want to form the enolate ion? Carbon two or carbon six? Great. Any one of those will do. So once you form your enolate ion, then think of it that the enolate ion will attack. Let us say we use carbon two. Okay, so therefore the enolate ion will attack carbon seven because carbon seven will now be your electrophilic carbon. Okay, if that is the case, how many member ring are we going to form? What is the size of the ring? Six. Very good. Six member ring. So therefore, it will be this. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so then let me go ahead and uh, okay, we have this here. So go ahead and do this. We have this here, and then of course S R is still here. Okay, let us go ahead and number this. Okay, <coughs> so what we have. We have our carbon one. Carbon one is right here. Carbon. Keep in mind that we use carbon two for the for the enolate. Carbon two is right here. Okay. And carbon three is here. Carbon four is here. Carbon five is here. Carbon six is here. And carbon seven, that is where we attack. That is what we attack. Okay. Okay. In in so doing, by attacking carbon seven, we are also going to lose this group here. Okay. We are going to lose that group. And that will be the product of this reaction. Okay. We call this intramolecular cleansing condensation because the the, uh, the enolate, which is our nucleophile, is in the same molecule as the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. Okay, that is why we refer to this as intramolecular. It is cleansing condensation because the electrophilic carbon that is attacked by the enolate ion is a carbonyl of an ester. That is the most important uh, thing you need to know about cleansing. For the cleansing, the electrophilic carbon must be the carbonyl of an ester. But for the aldo condensation, the electrophilic carbon must be the carbonyl of a ketone or the carbonyl of an aldehyde. That, those are the two distinctions between the aldo condensation and the cleansing condensation. For the aldo, the electrophilic carbon must be the carbonyl of a ketone or carbonyl of an aldehyde. For the cleansing, the electrophilic carbon must be the carbonyl of an ester. Okay? If you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay, good. So in this case, this is the product. This is the product they want. Okay, now, they also ask us to give the mechanism for this reaction. Okay, let us see here. They ask us to give the mechanism of this reaction. Okay, let us see. So, okay, for the mechanism, what is the first thing that happens? Take all of this out. For the mechanism, okay. The mechanism, the ethoxide, 
the inolate anion is ex excellent. The inolate ion is formed. Okay, so the first thing you get acid base reaction. And you're going to form inolate since we are using this. Let's put the two hydrogens here. Comes here, grab the alpha hydrogen, and then we form the inolate ion right here. And so let us go ahead and show that. Okay, so now we have this here. So we form the inolate ion right there. Now once we form the inolate ion, then what we do, we now take this inolate ion here, attach this here, and the carbonyl pi electron goes to the oxygen because carbon only uh, needs four bonds, and that is where you form your six member ring without form our six member ring okay we form the six member ring oxygen here negatively charged okay and then this uh, Ethoxide is here, and this is still here. Okay. So at this point, at this point, this molecule that we form here, this intermediate now, is unstable, and we are going to reform the carbonyl. When you reform the carbonyl, because carbon can only have four bonds, the ethoxide will leave. Okay, so let me move this a little bit. Okay, what is this here? Okay. okay, the ethoxide will leave what we have. We now have this. No, I don't want to use that. So we are going to reform the carbonyl, and of course this is still here. Okay, plus ethoxide. The ethoxide that left is here. Now guess what happens at this point? The ethoxide now, because the ethoxide is a very powerful base. And keep in mind that we, are, we still have an hydrogen, alpha hydrogen here. The ethoxide will come here and grab this. Grab the proton. Now we form another inolate ion. From inolate ion right here. Oh, let me do better than that. We use this one here. So from inolate ion right there, of course, uh, uh, this is still here. Okay. So at this point, uh, now that you form that inolate ion, then you now have the acid. That is where the acid comes in. If you recall that we have acid at, at step two, the acid comes here. So now you have the adonium ion. Okay. So this inolate ion that is formed here comes here to grab the proton from the 
adrenum ion, and you therefore form your final product. Let me go ahead and uh, bring everything to focus so that you can see this better. Okay. So now what do we have? We have we now have our final product. Let me take all of these numbers out. So what I've given you here, this is the uh, mechanism for the placing condensation. In this case, this is uh, uh, intramolecular placing condensation. So what do we start with? We start with uh, forming the enolate and an acid-base reaction. Then the enolate uh, reacts as a nucleophile to attack the electrophilic carbon right here. And then we form our intermediate alkoxide right here. And then we reform the carbonyl right here. So essentially, you will say that we form the final product. But because the ethoxide is still in solution, the ethoxide will come here, react as a base to grab the proton to form the enolate again. And then that enolate is now protonated with adrenum ion. And that is why you have this right here. Okay? So that is the that is the reaction uh, mechanism for the clasing condensation. Let us do one more and then we call it a day. Uh, that would be what did you just we did that uh, was five, okay? Six. Let's see, what six looks like. Okay, this is very good. We do this and then we call it a day. Uh, okay. Uh, students, go ahead and read. I think you did not give your name. Go ahead and read question number six for us. Okay, thank you. Now, this question says employing the Aldo condensation. Outline a scheme to show how you will obtain two butyl one octanol. Okay, this is a very interesting question. They, right away, they have told us that we need to use aldo condensation. Okay, so keep that in mind. They've also told us that you need to use an appropriate carbonyl compound. In other words, it's only one carbonyl compound you have to use. Okay? Only one carbonyl compound, appropriate carbonyl compound. So we know that. Also, finally, they told us to make this molecule here, 2 butyl one octanol. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, we need to know our, uh, uh, the nomenclature, right? Know the nomenclature, know the structure of this molecule. So let us do that. 2 butyl one octanol. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's uh, number this. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So two butyl. Put it in the two position. One, two, three, four. Okay. That is what they want us to make. Now, but they want us to make this using an aldo condensation. This question does require that you do you think critically. This question is not as innocent as it as it looks. You have to do some critical thinking here. Of course, you also need to have knowledge of all of those reactions. Now, since they told us to make aldo condensation, you know that for aldo condensation, the final product must be an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. Okay? It must be alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. For example, something like this, right? Okay? This is alpha. This is beta. Okay, so you know that. It, could, it has to be aldehyde or ketone. Now, they've given, given, us, an, given us an alcohol 
So you also then have to assume right here that the, fa the, fa the product of the aldo was converted to the alcohol, in this case, primary alcohol. So if this is a primary alcohol, how do you get a primary alcohol? You cannot get the primary alcohol from a ketone. You have to get it from an aldehyde. So therefore, we have to assume that carbon-1 must be the carbonyl of an aldehyde, okay? And then that you must have a carbon-carbon double bond between carbon-2 and carbon-3. Let me write it down here. I hope you follow that logic so far. So we have this. Okay, so this is going to be carbonyl of aldehyde. That's right here. To say this can be here. Okay, so therefore it must be here. Okay, now this is this must be the product of the aldo condensation. In order for us, keep in mind, in order for us to get this this here. Okay, because we are, at this point I, I am assuming that carbon one, which is this here, must be the carbonyl of an aldehyde. Okay, and since the aldo condensation, you must have an alpha beta on saturation. That is why I place the double bond between carbon two and carbon three. Do you follow that? If you follow that, give me a happy face. Okay, okay. Now, if you follow that, now the next step is the next step is you now want to break down this molecule here. I call let me call this molecule A. Let us call this molecule A. Okay, you want to break that down. So I would therefore say, okay, that was where the original carbonyl was. And then I will say that this carbon here, of course, this here was my alpha carbon to form the enolate that gives us the enolate. Okay? Okay, so if that is the case, let us look at the starting material for this carbon A, I mean compound A. Take this out. Okay, follow me now. Let us see. I am going to say it is this here. Okay. Now let me write it so that it will be better for you to see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay, and that is this part of. Okay, that is that part of the molecule. Then the other part of the molecule will be. Keep in mind, this will be the alpha carbon, which means that we lost two hydrogen here, right here. So therefore, that will be this one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So, this here I call this molecule B and molecule C. If you notice here, molecules B and C are the same. Molecule B and, uh, B and C are the same. Okay? Keep in mind, they told us we must make this compound, let us call this compound here, uh, let us call this compound that we need to make, let us call that, uh, D, compound D. We must make it only for one carbonic compound. If you see here, B and C are the same. So therefore, if you want to do your aldo condensation, 
We just take any one of them. You can take any one of them, say two most of any one of them, okay? And then what do you do? For the idle condensation, you have hydroxide in the presence of ethyl alcohol, and that gives us that gives us molecule A. If you look at it, that gives us molecule A right here. Okay? And that's your aldo condensation. That is your aldo condensation. Now the next question is, how do you get molecule D from your aldo condensation product? Okay? Take this out. Can anybody tell us how do we get molecule D from molecule A? Because if molecule A is your aldo condensation product, we've already, uh, based on the analysis that we've done, we say that we need uh, either molecule B or molecule C to give molecule A through aldo condensation. Somebody has a question. Reduce it. Oh, okay. I see. You're giving me the answer. Redu reduction, exactly. Reduce the. Very good. Okay. You could do two reduction here. One, you reduce the uh, molecule A with sodium borohydride. Step one, followed by dilute acid. Okay, let me move this a little bit so. Okay, and what does that do? what does that do? What does it do? Sodium borohydride and molecule A, what does it do? What does it do to give us a primary aqua? Okay, good. Okay, so that gives us the Okay, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we now have this here. And then, yes, go ahead and ask your question. Does it also reduce the double bond? No, sodium borohydride does not reduce the double bond. Okay, so now you could now take the, uh, reduce the double bond by using hydrogen, using hydrogen, and uh, palladium. Okay, if you do that, then you get your final product. Okay, which is uh, Now we this here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is your final product. Let me put everything back in focus for you guys. Okay. So, so what we have here? Uh, they told us to make. They told us to make uh, this molecule here to. Two butyl, two butyl, one octanol, using an aldo condensation, and that is what we've done. And so, what we did do, we simply let me take this out because we're giving this here. Okay, we si we simply rationalize that. For us to, to make this molecule here, uh, we need to start with uh, XNR, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We started with XNR. Okay, so we subjected XNR to aldo condensation, and that gave us the, the aldo product, with what we call molecule A. And then we, we took the aldo product, uh, aldo condensation product. We did the 
reduction with sodium borohydride to reduce the aldehyde to primary alcohol, and then we then reduce the carbon carbon double bond to carbon uh, carbon single bond. Somebody has a question. Does the starting material have to be two aldehydes, or can it also be an aldehyde or a ketone? No, based on the question that we are giving us here, the starting material has got to be X and R. You cannot use anything else. Remember that we got to we rationalize that we have to use X and R uh, based on uh, the analysis that we did of the of the uh, final product. Keep in mind, okay, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Uh, this part of the molecule here, look at this is just follow this here. That's cis carbon. That's cis carbon right there. Okay? That is cis carbon. So external, that is where the external is coming from. Then the other part of the molecule, this here, this other part here, is also cis carbon. So you have no choice but to use external. Okay? Okay. No, but you you cannot use anything else but the X and R in this part for this particular problem. Okay, and at this point, I think we have come to the end of our session today. Uh, let me see those of you who are still here: Ayana, okay, Chelsea, Faith, uh, Frederick, uh, Ore, uh, Student 15, uh, uh, Tamara. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed today's session, and uh, I will post this material by tomorrow. And I also will be in my office tomorrow uh, afternoon if any uh, one of you guys want to see me. Uh, but uh, until I see you, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, by the way, I will also have uh, I, I will post this material uh, by tomorrow morning, and I will be in my office anytime after after two o'clock tomorrow. And also, I will be having a session for your final exam on Friday. This coming Friday, uh, that is uh, April 24 at 7 p.m. And then I will have the last uh, review session with you guys on Monday. Uh, that will be also at 7 o'clock, uh, April 27, because I know your final exam is on April 29. Uh, so anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, those of you who want to see me tomorrow, I will be here. Okay, so. Until I see you, I say so long. Oh, by the way, I will I will stay around for another five or ten minutes for those of you who want to uh, uh, to to talk to me uh, to ask for that question. So in the meantime, let me go ahead and uh, stop the recording.